Hi everyone, Dylan here of Harmonic Design. I'm the developer and creator of HD Quiz, a fairly popular quiz building plugin for WordPress. Um, today I'd like to go over and kind of build a little tutorial to uh, go over HD Quiz and some of the uh, intricacies of how to use it, as well as just kind of help anyone who's new to HD Quiz or WordPress or just having a website all together. So with that, let's jump in. So once you've installed HD Quiz, the first page you're likely to come across is the page right now on the screen. This is the main HD Quiz page where you can add uh, new quizzes. You'll be able to add questions, um, edit quiz settings, all that kind of stuff. But since this is a brand new install, the first thing we probably want to do is go to the About slash Options page, which is located right here underneath HD Quiz. On this page, we'll get the kind of global or general options for HD Quiz. These are the options and settings that kind of um, you know, affect every single quiz on your website. So the first option here is an option to input your Facebook app ID. Now, I'm not going to get into why this is needed, I mean the actual technicalities of it, but basically the way that Facebook sharing works is by default, it's actually impossible for Facebook to know what the results of the quiz were. Unlike Twitter, where you can send custom text with the share, you can't do that by default with Facebook. So in order to be able to share on Facebook your uh, results, you'll need a Facebook app ID. In order to do that, you'll need to go to developer.facebook.com, sign up, it's free, and just cre create a uh, Facebook app. Once done, you'll just copy and paste your ID right into this box, and then HD Quiz will now have permission to send custom text to Facebook. You don't need to do this, it's completely optional, but it's there to go the extra mile if you need it. The next is your Twitter handle. Um, basically, anytime someone shares your quiz on Twitter, you can uh, have them mention your account. This is just great to give your Twitter profile a bit more exposure. Once again, completely optional, only use it if you need it. Um, this next series of uh, options and settings are for translations. Um, H, you know, I'm Canadian and regrettably I only speak English. My French is uh, unfortunately not very, very good. So, um, you know, it's an English only plugin, but HD Quiz is actually pretty popular in uh, lots of foreign languages. So that's what these settings are there for. So that way you can offer your user base uh, HD Quiz in your own native language. So for instance, this option is to rename the finish button to whatever finishes in your, native, in your native language. Same with next and results and anything else. On this option here, allow authors role access. Um, by default, only uh, website administrators and editors are the only people that have the kind of privileged, the access level uh, to edit and modify quizzes. However, some people have you know, very big popular blogs and you have lots of authors on your blog and you may want to grant your authors access to um, add and create quizzes as well. Um, if that's uh, you know, a situation you find yourself in, you can enable this and then authors will be able to create quizzes as well. And finally, the last kind of important feature is the add set code. So you can paste any code or content you want here but, uh, you know, for example, if you were to use Google AdWords, you can paste your Google AdWords um, uh, tracking code here. And then HD Quiz will actually uh, show that code every fourth question. Now, you may be wondering why every fourth question, not every question. And it's simply because doing it every question would actually be against Google's term, terms of services. They have very strict kind of anti-spam rules where you're not allowed to show your ad too often or you could get banned. So by limiting it to only every fourth question, I'm helping kind of protect you from, uh, you know, getting banned by Google and losing your ad revenue. So those are the kind of basic generic options. A bit further down, you'll see some upcoming features that I have on the works, some quick documentation, as well as a list of other harmonic design WordPress plugins that you might be interested in, especially um, HD Forms and HD Commerce. I actually got a really, really big update to HD Commerce coming out. So keep your eyes open for that. If you want just an incredibly simple and intuitive e-commerce solution, you gotta go HD Commerce, it's amazing. 
so now that we kind of, kind of went through and took a look at our general options, and by the way, it should go without saying, but you need to save once you've changed these options, but you don't need any of these options. All these options are completely optional. You can leave everything default and HD quiz will still work pretty damn great right out of the box. But let's get started and actually create a quiz. So in order to do that, we'll, we can either select the quizzes um, link or we can select the HD quiz link. Both actually go to the exact same page which is that initial main page that we first talked about. So the first thing we want to do is we want to actually add a quiz. So let's add a quiz called animals. So in order to add the quiz, you need to press enter. So if you wait too long before pressing enter, you'll actually get this useful little help tool tip that just reminds you that you need to actually press enter and boom, animals has been added. Please select it below to edit quiz settings and add questions. So here we go. So this is where all the quizzes we create will kind of appear in a list right down here. Right here is also something called a short code. Um, now, if you're using Gutenberg, which I recommend, um, there's actually a, a custom Gutenberg block that I created, making it incredibly easy to add any quiz to any page or post. But if you're not using Gutenberg, perhaps you're still using the classic editor, or maybe you're using a different page builder like Elementor or something, then what you can do is you can actually just copy and paste this short code in, and then WordPress will automatically show the quiz in place of this short code. But we'll, we can get more into that later. For now, let's start actually building out our quiz and adding questions. So let's select the quiz animals. And we're now on this sort of quiz edit page. So we have the name of the quiz. We have a quick button to add questions to the quiz. Um, this is to save the quiz, which is used if you edit the quiz settings or if you reorder the questions, which we'll get into in a moment. Um, once again, we have the short code listed and let's click on quiz settings to see a, a list of all the settings. We won't actually change these settings, at least not yet, but I just want to kind of go over some of the basics. So here we have the quiz pass percentage. So this is the percentage of questions that the user needs to get right in order for the quiz to be considered passed. So for instance, if I was to change this to 50, then you only need 50% of the questions. I'll set that back to 70. The quiz um, uh, pass uh, text is the text that will appear if the user achieves this score. And the fail is if the user does not achieve that score. Um, here we have some more advanced uh, features and settings for HD quiz, but once again, we'll get into that uh, a little bit later. I, the main thing is I want to show you what the quiz looks like by default, because by default, it's probably more than good enough for the vast majority of you. However, it's a lot easier to show you what these settings do and how they affect the quiz once you've seen what the quiz looks like before, then I can change these settings so you can see kind of how they interact. So we'll get into that in a moment. But um, just to go over some of these uh, uh, some features, so we have randomized orders and we have WP pagination. And I just want to bring a bit of extra attention to the WP pagination. WP stands for WordPress. This feature is strongly recommended to not ever use. This feature is here for some legacy users that need it or for very um, specific use cases. But generally speaking, I do not recommend using this feature. You should always keep it uh, to zero if needed. So let's just say you go in and you set your settings and you save the quiz. The quiz is now saved, it lets you know. Let's start adding questions. So let's add a new question. And the first question will be, what is the fastest land animal? So that's the question. So here we have some of the three more common settings. We have image-based answers, which if I select, we can now upload an image for each answer. We have question as a title, which is kind of used to help group um, certain questions together. So for example, if I had a bunch of questions that were specific to land animals, I might want to call this land animals, select question as a title, and then it's no longer a question. It's now just used as a title. And I can have another one called, you know, aerial animals or animals of the sea or whatever but we're not gonna use that right now. So let's set that back to the fastest land animal. Next is the paginate. So paginate is if you wanna split your questions into kind of multiple pages, you would want to select uh, paginate. 
so basically what paginate does is basically starting with this page new question it's a new it starts starting with this question it's a new page so generally speaking you don't really want to use this on the first question you would only ever want to use this on questions after and then here we have what the answers are so you can have up to 10 answers per question which i'm hoping is more than enough for all of you um, i'm just going to use four answers just for this demo so let's use a cheetah I feel like cheetah is spelled with an H, right? I don't know. I need to go back to elementary school and figure out how to, uh, you know, learn my animals again. So let's go with cheetah, um, a horse, um, maybe a wolf. What's another fast animal? Maybe a gazelle. Sure. So there, there's my four answers. But of course, we got to select which of these four answers is the correct answer. And in our case, the correct answer is the cheetah. So that's it, that's all we actually need. We need the name, we need the question, we need some answers, we need one of the answers to be right, and that's it, save question. Once you click save, it'll you know say, send everything to the database and it'll let you know once the question has been successfully saved. However, if you want, you can kind of go the extra mile and add in some extra settings and options. So for example, I'm gonna select extra, and now we have what's called a featured image. And the featured image is just kind of a generic image that appears above the question. So let's set um, a featured image. And I think I, I saved some images already to the database. So let's select this one here. This is an image of Megatron from an old TV series, an old children's show called Beast Wars. Um, for those of you anywhere near my age, you'll like this reference. The rest of you will probably just be confused, but eh, let's have fun with it. The next is a tooltip. So if you want to know what a tooltip is, this question mark here is an example of a tooltip. So if you mouse over it, you get some extra content. So a tooltip is really useful for if you want to add additional information or instructions or context to a question, or even if you just want to provide a little hint to your users, give them a little hint to help them find the right answer. And then here we have some extra text uh, that appears if the user got the um, answer wrong. So if the user gets the answer wrong, we'll let them know why cheetah is the right answer. So Actually, I have no idea if the cheetah can run 40 kilometers. I have no idea what their top speed is. Just setting this up as an example. And then lastly, we have a quizzes tab. So we only have one quiz added so far, and that's the animals quiz, which is already selected. But if you have multiple quizzes added to your site, these quizzes will appear here. And you can actually add this question to multiple quizzes. Um, that's basically because sometimes you want to reuse the same question across multiple quizzes. And instead of having to recreate the, quiz, uh, the question every single time, you can just kind of attach the, uh, the question to as many quizzes as you want. It kind of works like a blog with posts and categories. Think of a quiz as nothing more than a category and a question as a post. But we only have the one quiz and we only want this question saved to the one quiz. So let's save our changes and let's add a new question. So this question will be, um, what is the largest animal to have ever lived? And we'll use the image-based answers for this one. And the answers will be um, elephants, giant squid, blue whale, or um, I don't know, maybe a giraffe. So there's my four answers. Of course, the correct answer is the blue whale. And now we can actually select our images. So I've already, once again, I've already got these images uploaded. So elephants, giant squid, blue whale, and giraffe. And I'm not even gonna bother with the extra features for this question. I'm just gonna leave it empty. That way you can see the difference between the two. So let's save the question. So you know what, even though we only have two questions added to the quiz, let's actually see what the quiz looks like. So I'm just gonna create a new post. We'll call it um, the animal quiz. 
And now we're going to add a block, a Gutenberg block called HD quiz. And now we've got the block cr created and we need to select which quiz we want to add. So we're going to select animals. So this drop down box will actually display a list of all quizzes added to the site. We only have one uh, quiz added to the site, the animals quiz, and that's it. So that's how easy it is to add the quiz using Gutenberg. However, if you're using, once again, the classical editor, Elementor, any other page builder, you could use that short code I talked about earlier, copy and paste that short code in, and you'll get the same thing. So let's publish this. Done. And let's take a look at what it looks like. So this is what the quiz looks like. So this is the featured image we set, which I said is, like I said, it's an image that appears just before the, uh, the question. Here's the first question. What is the fastest land animal? Cheetah, horse, wolf, or gazelle? Let's choose gazelle. We'll, we'll, even though cheetah is the right answer, we'll choose gazelle. And what is the largest animal to have ever lived? That would be the blue whale. And let's finish. So now it scrolls us to the top and it says results, one out of two. So we, we didn't pass the quiz. We can share this quiz on social, on social media. And if we scroll down, we'll actually see here that we got gazelle wrong. That's the wrong answer. We got the extra text. Because we got the answer wrong, it's showing us this uh, wrong text. If we actually chose the correct answer, if we chose cheetah, then this text wouldn't have appeared. And we scroll down here, and this is highlighted green because we got the answer right. We're awesome. Now let's take a look at what some of these settings uh, change. So if I go to HD quiz, select animals, Go to quiz settings and let's take a look at what some of these do so let's do a quiz path so if you pass the quiz you get the photo of a lion uh oh looks like my internet's uh being a little slow with the whole uh quarantine covid thing my internet has been really flaky sometimes it's lightning fast other times it just disconnects like it did apparently here let's try this again there we go showed up that time okay so, congratulations. However, if you fail, we'll give you the photo of a, is this the again? There we go. We'll give you a photo of a naked mole rat. You need to go to the zoo and learn more, sure. Um, let's keep let's so now, now let's go over what these actual advanced options do so the share uh, quiz results so by default whenever you complete a quiz you can share the you can share your results so these share buttons here however if you want to disable that for whatever reason you can just uncheck this and then those share options will no longer appear the show result above quiz is about the position of the quiz right, you can either show it above which is by default or below um, it's better to show it above because when you show it above, you kind of get this really nice animation where your site automatically scrolls up to the top and it's really good in conjunction with these options as well. Because if you show the results below the quiz, when the user completes the quiz, they might not even realize that they can scroll up and take a look at what questions they got right and what questions they got wrong. But if you have the results above the quiz, then when the site scrolls up, it kind of gives them more visual feedback so that they're aware that the site has that HD quiz has actually kind of marked their answers as right or wrong. So this um, feature is the actual feature that enables the marking on whether HD quiz will show you whether you got the answer right or wrong. So for instance, how this answer is highlighted in red to denote that the answer was wrong and how this answer is highlighted in green to denote that the answer was correct. If you don't want that though, maybe you want to have your quiz on kind of hard mode. You don't want, you want to give the user the score, but you don't want to let them know which answers they got right and which answers they got wrong. You can uncheck this. This feature is off by default. And what this feature does is it kind of goes the extra step. So for instance, we got this answer wrong. We selected gazelle and it, it said it gave us the wrong. It said that this answer is wrong. What it didn't do was tell us what the right answer is. It didn't tell us that, oh, by the way, the right answer is cheetah. If we enable this option, show the correct answers on completion, then when we complete the quiz and we get it wrong, it'll also show us that cheetah is what the correct answer was supposed to be. 
the always show incorrect answer text. So that is this text here. So this text only, by default, this text only appears if you get the answer wrong. So we answered gazelle, which was wrong. So this text appeared. However, if I enable this, then it doesn't matter if we got the answer right or wrong, it'll still show that text. So if we answered cheetah, it'll still show this text. Stop users from, oh, uh, sorry, this one right here. Um, immediately mark answers as correct or incorrect. So by default, you need to actually complete, hit the finish button, and then HD quiz goes and completes and marks the quizzes. However, if you have this feature enabled, immediately mark answers as correct or incorrect, then as soon as you select an answer, it'll automatically tell you whether you got the answer right or wrong. Stop users from changing their answers kind of locks your answer in. So for instance, you'll notice that I select the gazelle, but then I can change my answer. You know what, Never mind. I want, to, I want to change it to wolf or I want to change it to horse. If I have that feature enabled, then once I select, for instance, horse, it's locked in and it won't let me select cheetah or wolf or gazelle. It'll be locked in on horse. So let's enable that, for example. Next is the timer or countdown. So this is just a quiz timer that gives the user a certain amount of seconds to complete a quiz. So by default, the timer is disabled. You can just set it to zero to disable it. But for instance, if you want to give the user 45 seconds to complete the quiz, type in 45. If you want to give them a minute, type in 60. If you want to give them two minutes, type in 120 and they'll have two minutes. We have a really short quiz, so we'll only give the user 45 seconds. Next is to randomize the question order. So by default, the order of the quiz, so the order of the questions is whatever order they appear here. And you can actually drag and drop to change the order. So the largest animal to have ever lived will now be the first or the second. So you can drag and drop to change the orders. But if I enable this option, then it'll actually randomize the order of the questions every time you load the quiz. Once again, it's great to kind of make your quiz a bit harder to add a bit more replayability, if you will. Randomize answer orders does the same thing, but to the order of the answers. So for instance, by default, these answers are always in the same order. Every time I load the quiz, cheetah will be the first answer, horse will be the second, wolf will be the third, and gazelle will be the fourth. However, if I enable this, then these, uh, ans the order of these answers will randomize every single time you load the quiz. This is a really cool feature. So let's say I have a quiz with a hundred questions added to it, which is a lot of questions. If I were to set this to, for example, 20, then what HD quiz will do is every single time the quiz loads, it'll randomly grab 20 out of those hundred questions and display them in a random order. So this is great because it really, especially if you use these features as well, then this basically creates a completely unique quiz, a completely unique experience every single time the quiz loads, which is really fun. But we're gonna set that to zero because we don't want it. And then once again, WP Pagination, we don't wanna use that. Very, very rarely would you ever wanna use that. Please don't use it. So now that we've actually gone and we've changed some of the default settings and we've added some custom pass and fill, let's save this quiz and take a new look. Let's reload the page. And you'll see that the order has changed. It's now wolf, gazelle, cheetah. Let's refresh again. Now it's wolf, horse, gazelle, cheetah. Refresh again. Gazelle, horse, wolf, cheetah. So as you can see, it changes every time. So let's select cheetah. Now as you can see, it's immediately marked the answer as correct. I can no longer change my answer to something else. And even though we got the answer correct, it's still showing us this text. We also have the quiz timer. So once we hit 30 seconds left, it changes to orange, which is basically a little warning. Uh-oh, you're running out of time. And you'll see that it'll actually change to red and start to kind of pulsate right there. So now we're really running out of time. So let's finish this quiz before we, uh, before we lose. So let's select blue whale and finish. So we got two out of two, which means we passed the quiz and it's showing us the picture of the lion with some extra content saying congratulations. And there you go. That's the basics of how to use HD quiz. As you can see, by default out of the gate, it's very simple and easy to use. You don't need 
to use any of these extra options or features if you don't want to, but I hope I made it fairly um, easy and intuitive to use and understand if you kind of need these extra options, options such as um, you know the timer or to randomize question order or anything else that there is. So thank you for taking the time to actually watch this video and I hope you learned. And I'm very open with giving support and help to uh, you know HD Quiz customers. So if you ever need any help or have any questions or have a feature request, please don't hesitate to contact me um, using any of the support links um, in the description below or the support links that can be found within HD Quiz itself. Um, thank you. Hope you all have a uh, you know a good um, time building quizzes.